Hello with everybody. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Um, I have been a little bit sick over the last week, so no recordings, but I'm back and uh, should be good to go. So anyways, uh, it's just, oops, sorry. I was just uh, checking out my zombie spawner and there was a bit of a problem down below. So what happens is, is that uh, some of the zombies get stuck there and become drowned. Um, I need to figure out something to do about that because there's definitely, uh, definitely an ongoing issue. Like uh, the re the reason I discovered this is I was trying to uh, to slay all the zombies in here, and I did. Boop. Uh, hang on. Yeah. 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 There we go. Uh, slaying all the zombies in here, but I still heard tons of zombie sounds. I wondered like what's going on. So I looked underneath and above, and like there's no other pockets that that there can be some except for down here where I have that little water stream to pull them in. So I either have to find some way to kill the baby zombies that go in there or some other way to deal with them. Maybe a separate bubble stream to bring them upwards. Uh, the other thing that happens too is because we're below sea level, um, when a zombie turns into a drowned having been in the water, because there's a buildup essentially that happens down there, uh, if, if there are drowned at nighttime they don't get pushed by water streams like their behavior underneath the water is different so because we're below sea level we're prone to that being a problem so anyways as you can see though <laughs> i've got a very healthy amount of experience after hanging out here for several hours um got a little chicken uh breeding area here and We've been cooking up lots of chickens, which I've taken liberty of moving over to here. So these are these are all just chickens that I have, um, you know, taken from over there and cooked. So there's quite a bit here. But I also had set up a small chicken farm. And the chicken farm itself is actually producing pretty well as well. But it takes a long time for it to happen. Um, the way this works is essentially you load up... Um, underneath here and underneath here with a whole bunch of chickens. Uh, so 24, the maximum that you can put into that area. When the chickens lay an egg, an egg passes through this hopper, which causes a signal to occur, which hits the observer and fires the redstone above it, which then hits this observer, um, which is also... Oh, hang on, sorry. I'm going to fire backwards, which uh, triggers this dispenser to quickly dispense a lava bucket and bring it back in. So... Because baby chickens are short enough, they don't get hit by the lava, but adult chickens do. So in theory, what happens is, uh, you know, chickens get spat out. When the, when the egg is laid, they go into this hopper here, which then eventually gets spat out. Um, baby chickens here, when they grow up, they're tall enough to get hit by the lava and turned into cooked chicken. So I'm actually, I'm going to take some of this cooked chicken here. Oh. I might have to deal with that. Anyways, um, I had just pre-filled the pre-filled the chest with chickens so I could see how many chickens are coming up. But there we go. So I want a full stack of chickens. So there we go. So yeah. Anyways, uh, and also the lava farm here is working really well. I'm collecting up lava buckets just because I want to be able to use them later at some point. Um, and I've been using them for fuel for the furnace. So that actually reminds me I need to go fill those up. <laughs> yeah so anyways um yeah uh early game farm lots of valuable things around here and like i say i like to multitask as well so i've got that uh that spruce tree up there is basically growing you know every time so no more problems with that department uh let's see here but yeah, I need to I need to analyze this uh, this problem down here. I've extended the glass downwards so I can see a bit better. Uh, previously, it was kind of blocked off. So yeah, what I think is happening is like baby zombies are getting sucked all the way in to this spot, and then they they stay because they're in water. They're going to become drowned. So we'll have to deal with that. Uh, anyways, I think that's it for the tour. I also want to change this into an automated 
melon pumpkin farm and I probably want to stack it up a few levels so why don't I get started with that um doo -doo -doo -doo, yeah have to empty my inventory and eh, those zombies are really annoying the other thing I want to do at some point maybe even today is I would like to make an automated uh way of shutting off the zombie farm because there are times when I am down here and I really don't really care much about the uh the zombies themselves. So let's do that. That will probably do it. Um, ideally, I'd probably want to have more light than just that. I may uh, put some glowstone on either side, then power it with redstone if I want to. But that should do for now. Okay. So uh, let's make a little bit of room. Uh, I'm going to add another to make these chests bigger here just because these are things I'm likely to want to bring up to the surface when I leave. Ah, uh, don't need that, don't need those. Definitely don't need those feathers. I'm gonna leave them here, I think. Oh, dropped that chicken by accident. Okay. Now, the other thing I did is um, I moved my bedroom. So previously I'd had a bedroom in here. And I have relocated it back this way farther because when there are zombies in that spawner, it's too close for me to be able to go to sleep. So, new bedroom. There we go. All right. Chickens are doing really well. Let's collect some eggs. And close that. And we'll just feed the chickens seeds to breed them. All right, so um, now I had previously crafted a bunch of components. I've used some of them, so I'm going to have to make more, I think. But let's get started with this at least. And we will have to um, let me just dispose of these eggs here. Boop, boop, boop. I've been saving up the rotten flesh. Um, that collection's coming along pretty good. I will use that eventually to trade with clerics, like I mentioned previously. Okay. So, um, all right, let's start with the observers. I think I'm going to run out of them, though. The observers have to be facing downward. So essentially what we want to do is we want to create um, an entire layer of observers that are observing each of the stems that we want to grow. So in this case, we are observing pumpkin and melons. Um, I may change the farm to do a certain kind per layer, but I'm fairly sure that the uh, the growth rate is affected when you do that. It's much better to have them adjacent to each other, two different kinds, than it is to have one single kind for an entire layer. Uh, now, just thinking about this, I probably made this really hard for myself, because I'm going to have to uh, be down there in the pumpkins and melons while they're growing to do the other half of this, this uh, setup here. So I might... Whoops, don't need that. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Well, I've got plenty of observers. I don't know why I thought I didn't have enough. But anyways, essentially what will happen is this observer, all of these observers are pointing at the stems, and every time a watermelon grows or a pumpkin grows, it sends, it, it the observer notices that and sends a redstone signal upwards, which we're going to take that and we're going to use it to um, smash smash the pumpkins and the watermelons uh, using pistons. So uh, the design for this farm I took from Shulker Craft, as I mentioned before, and I'll put a link to that uh, in the description of the video so you can make one yourself. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty straightforward design, and uh, I, I like it. I've used it a lot. Okay. <laughs> Now the painful part. Uh, let's put the pistons in my offhand, and we're gonna have to basically sneak in here and boop. So uh, I need a bit of redstone to show what's gonna happen here. I don't really want to hook it all up just quite yet, but I'll give you an idea of how it'll work. So. 
Add some actual redstone dust. And back we go. All right. So the, the redstone dust will take the signal from any observer that notices something change. And it will fire it up, basically. So observers looking down, redstone comes out the back. So it'll come up to the top. That top will light this line of redstone um, wherever it happens to be. And it will cause the pistons to... So uh, I just need to place a few more pistons to give the idea how this will work. I'm going to have to sneak underneath here to get to the rest of them. Aha! See? So that's what happened. The melon grew, and it uh, caused the signal to fire, which then caused the pistons to go. So I'm going to I think I'll borrow this. Just use this to get down where I need to go. Boop. Okay. So careful not to bust any of the existing um uh the existing stems because they'll have to grow back if i do that essentially we just basically aim these upwards like this and you have to be really close otherwise they'll they'll face sideways back but when you place them as long as you're underneath it at a steep angle like that it works okay That needs to not be there now. Um, okay, I'll just do two rows at once if I can. Boop, boop. One there. One there. Now, as you're as you're doing this, you want to basically make sure that you're right between the two, because if you move too far into the square, you're going to stand up, and that'll ruin it uh, for you. Ideally, you should place these before you put the farm itself down, but um, I made the farm first, so that's, that's the reason why I'm not doing it that way. Uh, boop. And boop. We won't need one here because this is our light source. We're just going to leave that where it is. However, we do need one here. Here and one uh, here. I'll show you what I mean, though. If you if you are at too far of an angle and you do it low enough, the piston points the wrong way. We don't want that to happen. Uh, so always make sure that you're close to the edge when you place the piston, and it should point downwards. Okay. Now, the one disadvantage of having this automated farm in this fashion is that it's going to create melon slices instead of full-size melons. So when you're trading with farmers, you need to trade full-size melons. So it's not a big deal. It just means it will have to craft the melon out of the melon pieces. And you don't get as many melon pieces when you when you do it. There's a random number. Um, there we go. How many I have still? Boop. I'll have to look up above to double check to make sure I've got all of them, but I think this should be it here. Remember, be near the edge. Yeah, that should be all of them. Okay, let's hop out and have a look at our farm. Good. So, um, basically, all we need to do is just make sure that every single... Every single area of this has redstone on it. Um, so if any single one of these observers fire, it will cause all of the other ones to fire as well. And we can leave that one up. Whoops. Ran out of redstone. Should need too much more than this, I think. Oddly enough, I was watching uh, someone who was doing modded Minecraft, and they... Uh, they needed some melons uh, for a certain kind of farm that they have to be able to produce power. So they actually used this vanilla design to make their uh, their farm for modern Minecraft. Boop. Down. Okay. Huh. That's really weird. I've never seen that before. Um, I think it's a bug. So anyways, what we're going to do is um, we're going to put some 
I'm going to use blocks of redstone, but what you can actually do is you can get away with using levers underneath or, uh, or even you can also use uh, redstone torches to power, but I like the way it looks when you have the redstone here. So uh, what we will do is let's just say for, for the sake of this example here, we're just going to have that there. Um, so basically, I need to lay down track underneath the entirety of the uh, of the farm. Where did I put my regular? Did I not pick up any regular? I guess I didn't. Okay. Need some regular rails as well. And these rails, I basically um, they're all of the regular rails that I have. I I stole from um, I stole those from mines, abandoned mine shafts. So. Didn't have to craft any of them myself. I'll leave that there for now. Definitely don't need all these torches. Okay. And I am going to run out of the, uh, the powered rail, I'm pretty sure. But that's okay. So, uh, essentially, we want to be able to have it come out. So I'm going to have probably this area as the exit of it. And I'm going to want to have three redstone tracks there. And one, two, three. And then we'll have three redstone tracks here, and you get the idea. And we'll just basically curve this around underneath the entirety of the of the farm, uh, which will allow us to pick up all of those juicy pumpkins and melons. Now, when you're laying down the rails, you want to make sure you have regular rails at the ends because the redstone rails will not turn the way that they do. Um, and we need the, the cart to be able to go through all of them. And the reason I use three redstone rails in the middle is it will accelerate them quite quickly so that you never have a danger of the mine cart not making it all the way through the whole course. Um, yes, we absolutely need to make sure that we cover everything. This will be nice. Um, I've been occasionally walking over and, and harvesting them, so this will be much, much more efficient because it will just carry on whether I'm uh, whether I'm doing anything or not. Okay, actually, I guess we do have enough rail for this level at least. Um, but I'll want to do multiple levels of this farm. And like, like other farms, I want to make sure there's a way to turn it off. So that's pretty simple. Um, all we have to do is run a redstone signal all the way to the end of the, uh, hang on here. Uh, okay. Sorry. So I'm going to make something here. So that looks different. We're going to run redstone to this spot. And there needs to be enough of um, this sort of a little bit of a length of redstone here. Uh, actually, let's do this one. Boop, boop. Just going to make it run all the way to the end. All right. Now, when, when a redstone, uh, when a cart runs to the end here and there's a powered redstone signal, it will reverse and turn around and come back. So that's what we want. We want the cart to be able to make its route all the way through the farm and all the way back. Um, we won't do anything fancy for the unloader yet, but um, there are ways to make really good unloaders. Okay. So now I need some iron, which I did not bring with me. Now this is iron just collected from the zombie farm. As you kill zombies, occasionally they drop ingots of iron, as well as all of the little um, nuggets. So I take the nuggets and craft them into iron, which is an easy way to get iron in the game. Okay, so let us make ourselves a mine cart. Oops, that's a cauldron, sorry. And we are going to need a hopper. So a hopper mine cart. This is a pretty standard way to collect drops when you're uh, making a farm of some sort. So quite, quite good. All right, so we'll pop this here. And because it's in the edge, it should start going on its own. All right, have a little look here. I'm gonna, just gonna make a spot here where you can watch. So as you see, it goes along. It's gonna collect everything that it can from up above. You see how there's nothing there. 
and it'll come to the end here. I'm going to break that just because I want it to stop so I can look at it. See? So here we go. Melon pumpkin. Um, right. So I'll break that for the moment. Um, I'm just going to stick those somewhere up here. Okay. Um, let's just, um, let's just make it easy for ourselves here. Let's so get you out of the way here. Uh, I don't want to power. Hmm. I'm just going to make a really simple collection uh, for this. Just because I don't, I actually have never, or haven't in a long time, built a proper minecart hopper collection system that will actually pause the minecart until it's empty. Um, so. We will just do a very simple version of this. Uh, and we're going to need what, six hoppers. So let's put our crafting table down again. <laughs> now, the thing about a hopper when you're doing this is the hopper has to not be redstone power because that will freeze the hopper so in order to give enough momentum to bring ourselves up and over i'm going to have a little section over here of redstone uh just to give it a bit of power as it goes through the circuit and at the same time i'm going to have to make sure that this spot here also has the same um, powered stop there But once again, don't power these ones. Uh, let's see here. So this needs to go that way. I'm going to have to build another couple of rails. So in order to do that, I'm going to need some sticks. And some iron, which I have. So do, do, do. Good enough. Okay. Uh, so turn, turn. Powered. And then not empowered, and then powered. Okay. So um, it'll pass over these six hoppers, and the hoppers will try to take something out of the hopper minecart each time that it, it rolls over one of them. So in theory, uh, let's just fill this back up here. Let's put our hopper minecart down again. Whoop. Not that way. That way. All right. So here we go. Now, as we've been setting here, the farm's been operating and basically punching down and busting any any full watermelon or pumpkin blocks that happen to be there. That's what we want. So definitely we'll have some, uh, some product coming out of here. So anything that's dropped will get picked up. Just to give you an example here, um, if I were to drop something inside of there, like say, I don't know, 11 minecarts. Oh, let me see if we can present it a little further. Yeah. So it'll sit there until the hopper minecart goes underneath it, and suddenly it's been picked up. We'll see that start to show up in here. So obviously at some point I dropped some deep slate as well, right? From mining. Now, this is not the most efficient... Um, Definitely not the most efficient way of collecting, but it'll do for now. All right. So anyways, I think I'll call it here for the episode. Um, <laughs> these are little rescue chickens, just so you know. But uh, anyways, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed the episode. Got a fancy little melon pumpkin farm going, and I know what's wrong with this. A couple things. These are locked uh, on the end here because of the redstone block. So I got to move that. And also I need to make sure that it doesn't pass underneath that chest because it's going to pick things up out of there as well. But anyways, hope you have a great day. Hope you enjoyed the episode and we'll see you next time. Stay safe, stay healthy and take care. Cheers.